Meet one of the least known of Africa's major carnivores, the most endangered super predator on the savanna. Among the most successful pack hunters on the planet, the most cooperative of all canids, this is the African wild dog. Our mission, to join one of the few packs left in the entire world and experience firsthand the life of the African wild dog. Be an insider in the creature world. That's the mission. The Krat Brothers. Dropped in remote regions to live with the creatures. Through their eyes. On their turf. By their rules. Be the creature. We're here in southern Africa, way out in the Okavango region of Botswana, one of the most extensive wilderness areas on the continent. Of all the super predators on the African savanna, lions, leopards, hyenas, cheetahs, African wild dogs are the most efficient and successful hunters. Why then are they also the most endangered, with numbers of only a few thousand across the entire African continent? To find out, we're gonna join a pack of African wild dogs as they struggle to increase not only the numbers of their pack, but the numbers of the entire species. Most of the time, they're nomads, constantly moving within their territory, except when they have pups. We've been tipped off that there's a wild dog den around here somewhere. It's a great tip from wild dog researchers Tico McNutt and Leslie Boggs. So we know what we're looking for, we know where we're going, now we just have to find the den. The den is really the thing you have to look for in order to get inside their lives. I wonder if that vulture in the distance is giving yes. it away. That's a good clue. He could be looking for meat scraps around the den. Chris, over there. A dog. Two dogs. Two, two, two. Right there, right there, there. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. There's the den. Wild dogs. These aren't domestic dogs. They're not feral. They're not an introduced species. They're totally wild and have been roaming Africa for millions of years. Check out those puppies. I can't believe we found them. It is like looking for a needle in a haystack. There are only three to 5,000 of these amazing dogs in the world. And right here is one of the last remaining packs. For a wild dog, the pack is everything. Here's what you need to know. The pack is a band of brothers that is teamed up with a gang of sisters. But usually, only one female and one male breed. That's it. Everyone else works together to help raise the alpha pair's puppies. They're about six or seven weeks old. The pups are almost like royalty, and every subordinate dog wants to do whatever they can to help raise these pups. Pups know it's feeding time. And here comes mom, the alpha female. She's the top dog. She started this pack along with the alpha male, and every single one of these pups is hers. Everyone pitches in and raising them, but mom is the only one who nurses them. Mother dog has seven pairs of nipples, so these 12 pups can all find a nipple at the same time. Wild dogs are amazing because they have larger litter sizes than any other canid in the world. To really find out how wild dogs work as such a well-honed unit, we need an insider's view of the pack. We need to be accepted by them. For now, we're gonna stay on the truck because that'll give him a chance to realize that we're not a threat. And that's essential for getting to know the inner workings of their team. To be part of the pack, you have to know everyone in it. We're gonna try to get a visual sense of who's who. 
Fortunately, everyone has her own coat pattern, as unique as a fingerprint. Using photos, drawings, and info from McNutt's 13-year study, we started getting to know the pack members, one dog at a time. Mom, age about five years, coat pattern, lots of black, three white bands on the tail. The strongest sister of the sisterhood that formed this pack. A gentle side, already obvious. Ooh, there are so many dogs in this pack. The alpha pair, six other adults, four yearlings, and 12 puppies. It's going to be confusing sorting out who's who. Hey, but that's what we're here to do. We can set up a base camp nearby so that we can be close to the pack, be with the pack, and really get to know each individual dog. And the more we become a member of the pack and really fit in, we're gonna find out what it's like to be the African wild dog. Night one. We were off to a good start. By now, we knew that mom's other half was a male we called Rip. Age, about four. Features, ripped ear sets him apart from the rest. Top dog among the brotherhood, a dog in his prime. Lions. To really understand wild dogs, you have to think about their worst nightmare. Lions. <gasps> giraffe kill. Good fight, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Lions on a giraffe kill. This is great luck for the wild dogs. There's so much meat on a giraffe. These lions may be here for two days guarding this kill and feasting. So that means that they won't be prowling around and maybe bumping into the den site, which will increase their odds of survival. Lions are wild dog killers. They are responsible for the majority of all wild dog deaths. Let's get out of here. With all the pressures from the other super predators, it's a tough life out here for the African wild dog. The safest place for the pups at night is in the den, and the safest place for me is in my tent. Day two. We arrived at the den early, but not early enough. Only a few dogs were around. The rest were out hunting. Here they come. The pups always stay at the den, so wild dogs divvy up roles. Each day, most of the pack goes out to hunt. A few stay behind as helpers, responsible for guarding the pups, the pack's future. This dog right here has some kind of growth on her lip. That might be one way we can tell her apart from the rest. They're in a playful mood, and she's letting them tug on her ear, tug on her fur, her tail, and even that funny lip of hers. Funny lip, sister of mom, growth on her lip, great guardian and favorite aunt to the puppies. It's dangerous being a helper, and nothing says it better than this wild dog in a tree. This helper was ambushed by a leopard, dragged up that tree, and the rest of the pack came around and made a big ruckus, and he took off, and this poor wild dog still hangs here right around the den. I've never seen a more macabre example of how a leopard is a serious enemy of the wild dog. Funny Lip senses danger. She's given off an alarm growl. For safety, it's right back to the den. Something's coming. It's not danger, it's breakfast. All right, here they come. The pack is back. Immediately, they go down into the den, checking for the pups. You can sense the excitement. Pups mob these returning adults, making that twittering sound. It 
this wild dog speak for feed me and they won't take no for an answer and the pups encourage her to regurgitate wow look at that that big ball of hamburger or impala burger it's not just mom who regurgitates every hunter does it providing for pups that aren't even their own pack first individual later that's the motto there it goes. Oh, that is so big. God for me. Gobbling it down. They're in such big mouthfuls, it looks like they're gonna choke. 15 minutes ago, that was an Impala. And now it's just Impala meat that has been stored in a dog's stomach for transport back to the den so that the other pack members who didn't accompany the hunt can eat. We can transport things with our hands. Dogs can't do that. Kind of smells a little funny. By now, the dog seemed comfortable with us. Maybe we could clear up a long-standing myth. Wild dogs have a bad reputation. They're thought of as killers, dangerous. A lot of people fear them and hate them. Let's see what happens. The sentries are on alert. It takes a little while. You can't come barreling right in. We'll just let them get used to me here. Nobody really seems to mind. This is good. Oh, here comes Rip, the alpha male. The ears are flattened. That's the stalking posture he's investigating. Let's face it, if he wanted to, he could finish me in seconds. But he doesn't. Dogs walking by eight feet away. They're fine, they're peaceful. They don't see us as a threat or mean us any harm. With that close encounter, I'm starting to feel like we're starting to fit in here. Here we have another regurgitation right here, right in front of us. These helpers have to be fed too. They didn't go out on the hunt. They're cooperating by staying behind and watching the pups. See Funny Lip? She gets her share too. This is incredibly rare in the animal world. Adults willingly feeding other adults. The puppies are fed, the helpers are fed, the hunters have done their job. Now it's our turn. We'll have to see if we can keep up with them on the hunt. By day five, we were hungry to join our pack on the hunt. But first we had to know our prey, the impala. This antelope is a favorite prey of the wild dog. Look at that leap. 30 feet in distance, and they can get 10 feet straight up in the air. They are the lifeline for the survival of these dogs. And over 80% of our pack's diet is Impala. Impala live in groups because the more eyes and ears you have on the lookout for predators like wild dogs, the better off you are. No prey is easy to catch, yet wild dogs catch their victim more than 50% of the time. No other super predator out here has a success rate that high. Not lions, not leopards, not cheetahs, no one. You better go, wild dogs are around. So now that we knew our target, we were ready for the hunt. And as the sun was going down, the pack was getting up. Wild dogs hunt mainly at dawn and dusk. It's 6 p.m. and the den site is the place to be. All the dogs are getting up now. It looks like we've got the makings of a hunting rally here. Different dogs are coming out of the bushes, coming out of their shade patches. Everybody's greeting everybody. I'm feeling the excitement of the pack as they all reconnect after their naps. And uh, this could lead into a hunt. Everybody's here. Mom, Rip, Funny Lip. Things are starting to happen. They just rounded up all the pups. Oh, they're leaving them by the den with some helpers. The hunters are going. Let's go. We're out of here. Today, we're not helpers. We're part of the hunting party. First gear. Had a little trouble finding it, but we're moving. 
first stage of the hunt, slow walk. All the dogs moving as one. Okay, they're upshifting to a trot. Second gear. It's a pack with a purpose, and it's vital, because they can't be single dogs out, one trotting, one running. They have to move almost as one, spreading out, all working on capturing a common prey. We're taking a mid position in the pack now. We've got three dogs behind us, most of them up front. This way, guys. It's amazing how comfortable they are with us, even the truck. At this point, they're not pursuing any particular prey. They're just looking for signs and warming up their bodies. If they start running here, it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I got to hang on back here. Man. Whoa, look out of that tree. Wow. Duck. Oh. They can move through this scrub so much easier than we can. <laughs> Martin, ah. Martin, you've got a stream of I know. blood down your cheek. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you know, we're learning what it's like to be a wild dog. I'm out, Martin. See if I can keep up with them on foot. OK, still in second gear. We're all searching for prey. Picking up signs. Getting the juices flowing. Then they kick it up to third gear. I'm shifting to third. And they keep going faster and faster until they reach a top speed of about 45 miles per hour. And I can't keep up with this pace. Those dogs are fast. And we're still not even chasing anything. But sooner or later, this fast-moving pack will flush an Impala. They're already in motion, and so they, the pack, have the initial advantage. After that, it's about running down your prey and stamina. Woohoo! Running with the pack. We are in high gear now. Look out. What's the problem, Martin? Oh, no. Broken spring shackle. There they go. Oh, no. We'd failed in our first hunt. There'd be others, but all we could do was limp back to camp, lick our wounds, and prepare for the next opportunity. Day 10. Sometime between our breakdown and today, the pack had made a kill. In good hunting grounds, wild dogs are the only super predators successful enough to have regular meal times. All the dogs have full bellies, and so the freeloaders are moving in. These are Franklins. These Franklins? are getting into regurgitated power meat. This puppy is eyeing them. The hunting instinct is queuing in. And already, the Franklin's won. And that just encourages the pups. He's focusing. Oh, he loves chasing those Franklin's. Look at the intensity on that face. Look at that. They're all after him now, in a pack. That was amazing. That was a little hunting miniature. I decided to find out just how hard this Franklin hunting was. Oh, they are fast. These are the first experiences in preparing the pups for the hunt. It'll take another year of practice like this that gets more advanced until they are full-fledged hunters. Like these yearlings. You're old enough to hunt now, aren't you? Hey, buddy. How you doing? You coming to check me out? 
yearlings are really curious about other things. They still have that puppy curiosity. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, come on closer. I'm not going to do anything. We called this yearling White Shoulder. Curious, playful, and you can't miss that big white patch across his back. <sighs> That's quieted down, huh, Chris? Yeah. I like all the naps they take. Wild dogs spend most of the day lying in the shade to get out of that hot sun. But you also have to be on the lookout. Each dog takes a different resting position around the den and faces a different direction. They keep their eyes and ears on alert for any approaching danger. Lions, hyenas, you gotta be ready to respond to that. Hey, there's a vulture approaching the puppies. Okay, he's picking up scraps. Vultures are scavengers. But a pup is a pretty helpless piece of meat. If this vulture gets a chance, who knows? He's moving in. Way too close. Way too close. Whoa. Wow, those puppies are happy to see that dog. So far, we've had both successes and failures on this creature adventure. We'd successfully become insiders to our pack, but it failed miserably as hunters. During the next week of the expedition... Which way did everybody go? We didn't exactly cover ourselves with glory. Hunt two, failure. Overheated radiator. Oh. Hunt five, failure. We just can't keep up with them. Stuck in sand. Hunt nine, failure. No more spare. Two punctures. But tomorrow's the day. We've been saying that for the past 12 days. Hunt 13, failure. Smashed windshield, punctured tire. The pack was doing great, but our success was zip, zero. Lost him again. One way or another, we vow to keep up with our pack and finish the hunt. Day 15. By now, we were getting a little desperate, feeling like total embarrassments to ourselves and our pack. Luckily, they didn't seem to hold it against us. All right, there goes another one. The hunting party is now at 10. We gotta follow. Oh. Get ahead and down there. I see him. I see him. Yeah. There they are. Oh. <laughs> I think we have a flat. Got some. Oh, we do have a flat. Oh, sh oh no. If we can change it fast enough, though, maybe we can still catch up. Let's do it. You know, we've got a flat tire. That's kind of ironic because the number two cause of death are injuries to their legs when they're hunting. A sprained ankle, a broken leg, an acacia thorn too deep in its toes. That could stop it from keeping up with the hunt. The machine of the wild dog is so important for their survival. Any defect, any break, that might be it for that dog. Eight minutes wasted. Go, go, go! But we're getting through. We are so much less maneuverable than the wild dogs are. We're lucky. We can fix our broken leg, but the wild dogs can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, there's four of them. Five. They're on the kill still. We're arriving late, but it looks like they killed an Impala. Look at that, dragging off the skin. That's about all that's left of this thing. In order to feed a big pack like this, they need to kill a few Impala each feeding time, if they can. Bunny lip is here. Yeah. Hey, white shoulder. Good work. Off with his rib cage. <laughs> it's a great morning for these dogs. After a successful hunt, a little game of chase, this is a great way to top it off. These yearlings are all fired up. They've been hunting with the pack ever since they were three to four months old. At this point, they're experienced enough to make kills and avoid being killed. Over 60% of wild dog pups die before their first birthday. So these dogs have a lot to celebrate. We have less. We're getting better at the hunt, but we still have to be there for the whole thing. I don't want to be the last dog getting to the kill. Like teenage humans, young wild dogs make life-altering decisions. When a young male wild dog reaches the age of about two to two and a half years old, he either stays with his home pack, remaining an important part of that team, or he decides to push off with some brothers and see if they can find some females, establish a territory, and start up a whole new pack. It's time to emigrate, wild dog style. We started out heading south. Our goal, experience the journey of emigrating wild dogs. The decision about whether or not to emigrate is about risk and reward. Stay safely at home and don't breed, or risk the dangers of the unknown territory for the chance to breed. See anybody around? Nah, just some goats over there. <laughs> As emigrating wild dogs, this cattle post is not something we want to see. People often kill wild dogs to protect their herds. So as human development spreads, it closes off options for the emigrating dogs. See, these domestic dogs living on the edge of the wilderness can pose a problem for the wild dogs. Wild dogs can get canine distemper and rabies from domestic dogs like these. Some diseases, like the distemper, is transmitted through the air, so we may have a little on us, so we're just gonna have to wash off. This was no place for an emigrating wild dog, so we turned around and headed northwest, giving a lift to some friends on the way. <laughs> How do you say wild dog in Sijana? Le tare lo. Le tare wa. Le tare lo. Le tare lo. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for uh, teaching me the language. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Wild dogs are known to have traveled more than 150 miles while emigrating. And it's pretty risky. Of 10 attempts, three can end in death. Other dogs wind up returning to their natal pack. Oh wow, a leopard. Such a rare sight. The guinea fowl, freaking out. They don't like this leopard around. Oh, the prince of stealth. He sent Marky, rubbing his head and spraying. Their territories range from four to more than 400 square miles. Leopards are a danger to the wild dogs. They sometimes even go down wild dog dens and take the pups night after night after night. Out here, cats really turn the table on the dogs. And any wild dogs that live here, they have to be on guard. Emigrating and starting a new pack is tough. Night 18. We could hear those lions roaring from our makeshift camp. Sleeping out here like this, it makes it really easy to imagine how vulnerable wild dogs are when they're sleeping at night. With the truck at our back, fire in front, it gave us some security. It would have to be enough.
Day 19, our journey as emigrating wild dogs continues. At this point, they'd be looking for new packs, hoping to lure away some females. Or should I try there? Sure. Could you spot for holes, because I really can't see. Yep, yeah, there are none. Check that mound right there. This is a wild dog track in the soft sand. This is definitely a cue that an emigrating wild dog would be able to pick up on. Wild dogs have scent glands between their foot pads, so they leave behind scents and information with every footstep. Since we couldn't decipher this critical scent information, we had to rely on a lot of legwork, days of searching, and our GPS. See the pads? Yeah, it looks like it to me. Finally, we found lots of tracks leading into a thicket. We knew we were close. This den site is right in the middle of a thicket of brush, and it's so hard to figure out how many dogs are in this pack, but the emigrating group of male dogs would have figured out who's who here from kilometers away through their nose. So what would our traveling dogs do now that they found a pack? Packs like this can kill emigrating males. What seems to be the most popular approach is for the emigrators to avoid the other packs, to slip into their territories and leave messages and scent marks that they're around. Then when the females in this pack come across those messages, they can decide whether to push off and join those males. That night, we slept near the pack. And in the morning, we could see for the first time that it was a small pack, only six dogs. Seems like everybody's waking up. Uh, stretching their legs. Ah, a little greeting ceremony. It's a good way, good way to lighten the load before a hunt and leave your scent behind, marking your territory. We're not far from the den, so any dog that smells this urine is gonna know that this is this dog's territory. You know, Martin, a small pack like this needs every dog to survive. I don't know if they have any young females to spare. The immigrators, they now have a choice. Strike off in search of other females or return to the natal pack. We should probably head on. All right, back to the home pack. We have to be careful that we don't lead people who hate wild dogs to where the wild dogs are. We're just sweeping our tracks of where we went off the road. We now know from experience that being a young emigrating wild dog is not easy. You're a young dog going off with brother or sister teams no more experienced than you. The dangers are out there, and there are many. The odds are so stacked against these dogs that try new packs. It's great to have a home pack to return to. Yeah, I miss them. Hello, pack. Do you see any dogs? Let's see. I don't see anybody. No Franklins. I don't see anybody in the shade. It's dead quiet. Huh, that skink is the only creature around. There are no signs here of any predators. No python tracks going down into the hole. Just puppy tracks and Franklin tracks. What could have happened to our pack? Let's get in there and see if we can find any clues. Let's do it. Into the wild dog den. All right, it's pretty nice and wide at the beginning here, but it thins out pretty quickly. Ow! I think I see your light, but it's so shallow. I can't get any farther. Entrance itself is just too narrow. Well, down this one, there's lots of roots on the ceiling. Can't get anywhere. My shoulders are wedged. <laughs> oh no, that one's thinner, isn't it? Boy, does it stink down here. <laughs> there is an extra tunnel and goes even deeper. Ow, ow, something bit me. Oh, Chris is getting attacked by fleas. Ow. Get out of there, Chris. <laughs> These fleas are brutal. <laughs> and that might be exactly why the dogs left. If the flea infestation gets too much, those fleas can really not only pester the pups, but suck a lot of blood, too. Hey, that's so great info, Martin. But can you get me out of here? <laughs> OK. He always does that. OK, I got you. Here we go. 
Ah, my shirt. Okay, okay. here you go. Uh, uh, Woo. Uh, <laughs> so what's it like to live in a wild dog den? <laughs> it is wild down there. Definitely no wild dogs. Where's the pack? If we keep making concentric circles from this den site, we'll find them. So what do you think happened? My money's on the fleas. They hurt you so much. Imagine what they do to a puppy. I know it. Maybe a predator discovered the den killed all the pups. It's hard to say. Where did they go? It was a six-hour search. Hey, there are some. Right up here. To the right. OK, OK. Puppies, Chris. Pups, they're all here. Here they are. While we were gone, everything's changed. Mom moved her puppies to a new den. Everybody's here. Hey, this is great, huh? Mom? I can't believe it. I can't, I can't believe it. And she moved all these puppies by herself in her mouth. Yep. What a job. This den is about three miles away. That means she would have had to travel about 70 miles because only the mother dog moves the pups. And that is phenomenal. She probably did all this in a single night. Yeah. And she has to do it all pretty quickly in one clump of time because she can't afford to have her pups split up in two different areas for long. Hey, the little puppy Marmo hasn't moved since we got here. Maybe something's wrong with him. Chris, do you think he's sick? I don't know. He looks kind of weak. It's really not looking good. He has this big patch right there, a big matted patch of what looks like blood. Also, his legs quivering a little. His breathing seems really labored, like he can't fill up his lungs. He can't even get lying down straight. You can pull through this. He's trying really hard to stand up, but he just can't do it just doesn't have the strength. He can't even react to the other puppy, his sibling who's trying to get him to play. The other puppy isn't standing up, isn't playing back, and I'm afraid he could get hurt even worse. It's tough being a wild dog pup. That's why wild dogs have so many pups, because inevitably they'll lose a few to predators, to sickness, to starvation. All kinds of things can go wrong. I think he's dead. I think he just died, Chris. He's not moving at all. It might have been the stress of the journey, or maybe it was some kind of disease or sickness back at the other den. You know, the puppy thinks he's playing. He's just chewing on him and doesn't realize that he's dead. It's just, it's really sad to see. Part of life is a wild dog. With Marmo lifeless at the den mouth, we noticed other pups with similar sores. So no matter how careful mom had been transporting her pups, some had been hurt on the journey. Wait, he's moving. He's still alive. It's quiet now if he gets enough rest. Who knows, the healing powers of wild animals are phenomenal. And as long as the pups don't rough him up too much, he might have a chance to make it back. Here comes Funny Lip. What a great aunt. Uh, right to Marmo. I think he's gonna make it after all. The pups are really starting to expand their world now and push outwards. This is the first time a pup has really shown interest or been brave enough to approach our truck like that. What do you think, guy? I think it would be really cool to use a new object at the den site to test the pup's curiosity. Okay, ready. Okay.
definitely noticed. He even gave a little growl. the adults to break the ice. Lost interest pretty quickly. No meat on it, nothing important to them. But the puppies see this new object and they are very curious. You know, I'd say that on this scale of creature intelligence, dogs are near the top. Higher than bears and lions, lower than chimps and dolphins. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Whoa! <laughs> Bumped right <in. laughs> That is hilarious. Oh, well, look at that. This is fun. Their wet noses are messing up the lens. Day 21. Just two days left for us in our expedition. Two days to succeed or fail as a wild dog. We had to keep up with the hunt and not be the last on the kill. Almost everyone's come out for this hunt. shell there. what they find? They're very interested in this smell. Ah, oh, they're rolling in it. And that's mom. Wild dogs mark the boundary of their home range. Could this be a boundary that they're marking, they're getting the scent of another pack, and they're putting their scent down? This is kind of the strip of no man's land between two packs. This piece of turf is accessible to both packs with little conflict. And our pack is going in. OK, OK, let's move. Yeah, the dogs are looking like they need business. We got to keep up with them this time. Straight on while they are running. Check out this line of dogs. Boy, that is impressive. It's like a front moving yeah. towards their prey. They start fanning out. Who's that? Coming out of nowhere. It's Rip. He spots something. I'm with him. We got it. Well, he's on it. He's on the ball. Let go. OK, I got it. Of course, they got something. They took down an Impala. This may look a little gruesome, but wild dogs are fast killers. Cats, like lions, kill by strangulation, which is actually a longer death than the way wild dogs kill, which is to go straight for the belly and eviscerate the prey. And look how fast they're eating it. This thing will be gone in about four minutes. Bam! That yellow stuff is the stomach contents of our herbivore. All the grass, half-digested vegetation. Wow. So they do get a little bit of veggies. And the organs, they go for that liver. They go for the heart. So the young dogs eat first in the wild dog society. The older dogs are waiting in the back. There's Funny Lip. Alphas are in there too. Mom, Rip. They get to eat whenever they want. Yeah. Chris, you want to film? Sure. Go for it. It's rolling. And now, just like a mob, they're all over this kill, gobbling it up as fast as they can so that the pack gets it and some other predator, lions, hyenas, don't get in here while there's still food left. Here we are, right in amongst the pack. I love the way the wild dogs work. All the individuals that we've gotten to know working together as a pack to survive out here in this tough climate, not to mention the human pressures. It's great to see a pack like this succeeding. It's one of the yearlings. Hey, the great news is we weren't the last ones here. <laughs> you didn't want to miss out. I think we've just achieved a new level of being the wild dog. We did it. We finally did it. We kept up with them on the hunt, which is one of the most grueling creature experiences I've ever gone through. An incredible sporting event of the natural world. If there's one thing that's clear now at the end of our creature adventure, it's that wild dogs deal with life by working together. One for all and all for the pack. Mom, the proud, caring mother. 
Rip, hunter, alpha male. Funny Lip, the favorite ant. Marmo, the sick puppy. White Shoulder, the playful, curious yearling. And all the other pack members have taught us so much about who wild dogs really are. African wild dogs are speed sprinting, marathon, cooperative hunting, communal pup raising, antelope specializing canids, who with individuals working together as the pack are able to withstand so many natural pressures. Super predator attacks, fatal leg injuries, disease epidemic, kill fever, interpack conflict, and more. These forces against the wild dogs may have always kept their densities low, but add habitat loss and we have a critical situation. Our pups and yearlings simply do not have places to emigrate to to start new packs and raise pups of their own. It's up to us to provide good, friendly habitat so that these young dogs are able to increase their numbers and ensure a robust population for the survival of this phenomenal species.